Hello and welcome to Precon Decon, the video series where I deconstruct the pre-constructed decks of Magic the Gathering's history. In this video we're going to look at the second deck from the Ajani vs Nicole Balast dual deck, which is the Nicole Balast deck, uh, which is blue, black, red, as you might expect. I was really, really excited, I didn't mention in the last video, when... Um, Nicole Balas was going to be in one of these dual decks because uh, he's one of my favourite characters in all of Magic the Gathering's lore because I'm kind of basic, I guess. Um, but I was really excited to uh, pick up two of this product so I could get two copies of his Planeswalker card and then build a whole deck around that. And uh, yeah, it was a really great time. So really, really happy uh, that Nicole Balas got a whole deck dedicated to him. But does it live up to my expectations? Let's let's have a look at the deck list and uh, we'll talk about the cards and we'll find out, I suppose. Um, so we've got 16 creatures, 7 instants, 6 sorceries, 3 artifacts, 1 enchantment, 1 planeswalker, obviously, and then 26 lands. We've got a mana curve off to the side there. She, you know, goes all the way up to 8, so super expensive, grindy, Grixis kind of control here. Um, obviously we've got a whole bunch of, like, uh, spells. Um, so, yeah, we're going to see how it plays out and how it would have matched up against the Ajani deck. So obviously let's talk about the um the man, the dragon himself, Nicole Balas, Planeswalker. So four blue, double black, and red for five loyalty planeswalker. Um plus three to destroy a non-creature permanent. So that's so nice. Like plus three is such a huge amount of loyalty to gain from a really strong effect as well, just being able to blow up anything. Um one of the few answers the deck honestly has to like some of the enchantments in Ajani's deck. But this is really nice. Obviously, it can kill um, Ajani as well, which is really nice. Um, yeah, so a whole whole bunch of things. It can destroy lands as well, which is uh, which is very on brand for, for Nikki B, I suppose. Um, minus two to gain control of type creature. It's just permanent, just happens. Um, so that's really nice. So uh, the Ajani deck had, does have um, a few big creatures that can, yeah, like the Aegis Entony or like the... Um, uh, the fire main angel stuff like that um so nicole balas going being able to just steal them permanently is great and then the big old minus nine uh, which doesn't take too long to build up to with that plus three um so it does seven damage to target player then they discard seven cards then they sacrifice seven permanents so really like a johnny's actually really back breaking ultimate just to um because that is you know wiping out essentially like whole hand whole bunch of damage and then also, um, you know, just, you know, completely ravaging their board. So really, really um, good ultimate. Two good ultimates here on on these, on two very good uh, Planeswalkers, I think. Definitely the two strongest Planeswalkers. Oh, is it? Garrick and Liliana are both very good. You know what? They, they, they've, they've all been good so far. <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, I really like Nicole Blast. I think all his abilities are great. Um, right, and then move on to his uh, creature cards. So we've got a single Blazing Spectre, which is a reprint from Invasion. Uh, two black and red for a 2-2 with Flying Haste. When it deals combat damage to a player, they um, discard a card. So it's just normal sort of Spectre thing. The only thing red about it is that it has haste. So it's really nice. It can, it can swing in the turn you play it. Um, the Giant deck has, has actually, thinking about it, very few ways of dealing with flyers um it doesn't have from what i remember a lot of evasion it has the fire main angel which is super expensive it has the griffin guide to give stuff flying um yeah so this thing is kind of un unopposed most of the time i suppose uh we've got a demir cut post or demir cut purse even uh so one a blue and a black for a 2-2 when it deals combat damage to a player they they discard a card and you draw a card the most the most blue black effect ever it's just like i'm gonna draw something and you're gonna discard something it's just yeah very very straightforward um it always feels like this should have some sort of like evasion it like i don't know why maybe it's the art looking all ghosty and sort of sneaky like it always feels like it should have evasion but then i don't know maybe it would be <laughs> it would have been too good for the time if it had even like I guess like fear or unblockable or something, I don't know. Um but yeah, it's yeah, again, fairly for three mana, it's pretty solid, I think. Uh, right, a whole bunch of ETB creatures. So we've got a single Shriek more, uh, so four and a black for three two with fear, um, which can't so I mean it can't be blocked by artifact creatures or black creatures. Um, except by artifact creatures or black creatures even, uh, which means it's unblockable against the Ajani deck, which is kind of fun. Um, when it ends the battlefield, it does terror, so you destroy a non-artifact, non-black creature, which is all the creatures in Ajani's deck, and you can evoke it for one to black if you don't uh, want to pay five, um, you can just get the terror effect. Um, really solid creature, Shriekmore's great, I really like its inclusion here. Um, we've got a single steam core weird uh, so three and a blue for one three when it ends the battlefield if red was spent to cast it does two damage to a creature or player um it's all right yeah that's fine just adding adding in a shock as you cast it um and then ogre savant uh four and a red for a three two when it ends the battlefield if blue was spent to cast it you return a creature to his hand kind of expensive i think for just like a um you know like a mana war unsummon effect um yeah and just an extra bit of power i'm not 
I'm, I'm not really impressed by either of these too much. Um, I guess the Steam Core Weird, I think, is a little better. Um, the Ogre Savant actually can do some work just because a lot of the, the uh, Ajani's creatures rely on plus one, plus one counters. So this can be a way to like reset them. But um, it's kind of annoying because um, from what I remember, we're going to see these exact creatures again in in a few decks in the Is It versus Golgari run. So um, I kind of mentioned in a in a previous video of these dual decks, like um, it was the Dragons one about the um, the burn that was used in there and how that's uh, used in Koth's deck as well. Like um, annoyingly there is like sometimes like a fair amount of repetition between these uh between these dual decks but um weird tangent to go off from them but i just thought i'd just mention it because it, it it does bother me i think um and then this is a really nice reprint nice scape familiar so this is again from invasion block uh so one to black for one one uh blue spells and red spells you cast cost one less to cast so nice way of black to get a, a mana dork it's really nice that you know affects um you know blue and red spells um if I, note that if a spell is blue and red it doesn't get you don't get the discount twice just to <laughs> make make sure of that um and you pay one and black to regenerate it so yeah it's sort of doing a lot of things nicely here it's kind of like a, a cost reducer it's a nice little chump blocker yeah really like nice get familiar really wish they'd been more than one honestly um we've got two morgue toads two and a black for a two two you can sacrifice to give yourself blue and red it's all right again it's a little mana talk it's okay um, a single igneous pouncer for a black and red for five on with haste. Um, so very glass cannony, but it's got the uh, it's uh, you can either swamp cycle it for two or mountain cycle it for two. So this is the best that um this deck can do in terms of like um land searching and stuff because you don't have access to the same things that the uh the Ajani's Naya colors do. So we've got to make do with with these kind of overcosted land cycling creatures, I suppose. Uh, we've also got Jesse and Zombies that do basically exactly the same. They're super expensive to cast. Um, like you would never want to pay six mana for like for a two four with fear. Although I suppose it is actually unblockable again against a Johnny's deck in a way. Um, but I think most of the time you would island cycle or swamp cycle it to um to help you know smooth out your mana. We got a single Brackwater Elemental, two and a blue for a four four. When it attacks or blocks, gets sacrificed at the beginning of the next end step. So it's kind of like a blue ball lightning, I suppose. And you can unearth it for two and a blue. Um, so you can pay two and a blue, return it from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste, and it gets exiled at the beginning of the end of the next end step. Or if it would leave the battlefield, um, unearth only as a sorcery. Um, there's no, I, I'm almost certain we'll get into um, the instant sorceries, but I definitely think there's no ways of like messing around with this, like flickering it. So. Um, but you still you still get two swings that which is all right. Um, and then five field ochre, uh, so one a blue, black, and a red for a four two first strike, which is pretty menacing for the um a Johnny deck to deal with. Um, and again you can unearth it. So yeah, these these are okay. I kind of wish there'd been more on earth as well, but it's it's sort of all over the place in in terms of creatures. And then randomly a single surveilling sprite, like sure. <laughs> so one the blue for one one. The flying when it dies, you draw a card. Um, like it's fine, I suppose, but like it just feels very very random to include it. I suppose. I mean, it's just I mean it's a small cheap flyer to play early game. I suppose. Uh, a single Maroi, uh, two a blue and a black for a four four with flying, and then you upkeep, you lose a life. So kind of undercosted flyer at the expense of like draining you for one. Um, I suppose it's all right. It's okay. Um, and then a single slabbering nulls, uh, one in red for a two one. When it deals combat damage to a player, if you control a swamp, you may have that player discard a card. So there is kind of like a discard theme here, but like not that strong, I suppose. Like not to the extent like uh, the life gain is in in a Jani's deck. Um, and then we've got two Hellfire Mongrel, which sort of complements actually the um, the discard. Um, so two in red for a two two. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, that player has two or fewer cards in hand. Hellfire Mongrel uh, does two damage to them. So yeah, it does obviously punish the Ajani uh, deck for maybe like flooding out and just like dropping a bunch of uh, their cheapish creatures, I suppose. Um, but is two damage enough? I suppose it's fine, isn't it? Like it's all, it all stacks up. Um, kind of nice there's two of them in here actually. Um, but yeah, I, I I think there could have maybe been like a little more discard um, effects in here to um to maybe have that as a payoff maybe. But yeah, it might it might be fine. We'll see as we get into non creature spells. Uh, so we got cruel ultimatum <laughs> on the subject of discard. This does a whole bunch of discard. So double blue, triple black, double red. Uh, an opponent sacrifices a creature, discards three cards, loses five life. You return a creature from your graveyard to your hand, draw three cards, and then gain five life. So um, this really nice. Um, uh, it's really brutal actually. It's a swing to make them you know lose so much and you gain exactly the same. Uh, exactly the same. The discard three is particularly brutal, but then there's a chance you cast this at seven. You know, for on ten seven. You know, potentially the earliest um you might actually have more I don't, there's, there are some mana rocks in here but um discarding three they might 
might have already cast a bunch of stuff, but then who knows? I don't know. But um, yeah, really, really solid. Um, as a uh, really nice actually. This has the cruel ultimatum, and Ajani's deck has the um Titanic ultimatum. Nice, nice mirroring there. It's also very similar to um uh Nikki B's ultimate that you know they lose a whole bunch of stuff at once. So yeah. Really nice, really nice inclusion. Um, then single undermine, double blue and a black uh, counter target spell. It's control loses three life. Yep, just solid counter spell with uh, with a bit of life loss tacked onto it. Uh, single profane command uh, X and double black. Uh, you choose one target. I'll uh, choose two even. Uh, target player loses X life or return target creature card with convert it with mana value X less from your grave onto the battlefield. Or a creature gets minus X minus X turn turn or up to X target creatures gain fear into turn turn. So a really nice versatile spell here that it can do a whole bunch of stuff. I would most of the times I would think he would do the. Um, Maybe do the lose X life and and kill off a creature the minus X minus X, but you know there's a whole bunch of versatility. You know you could obviously kill something and then reanimate it, make a whole bunch of your creatures unblockable by giving them fear. Um, yeah, basically whatever you need at whatever point in the game, I think this is going to be um, it's going to have a useful effect. Uh, we've got a single Grixis charm, which again is nice because the uh, giant deck had a Naya charm. Uh, so blue, black, and red, choose one. You either bounce a permanent back to owner's hand, or a creature gets minus four, minus four to turn turn, or all your creatures get plus two, plus naught to turn turn. Um, again, these are all like really solid effects. I think all the um, Alara charms in general were pretty good. Um, yeah, these are all these are all great effects that the deck really wants. I think it's a, you know it's a kill spell or it's a I suppose the pump the the board wide pump is the one that's not so useful here because it obviously is more meant to be more like controlly and focusing more on like maybe like discard and stuff. But yeah, it's still like plus two plus not. It's not like you're going wide with a whole bunch of creatures, I suppose. But yeah, it's I mean it's still great. I think all those effects are good. Um, single slave to Bolas three and a, is it hybrid and a black? Uh, you gain control of the type creature, untap it against haste, and then it gets sacrificed at the beginning of the next turn step. So this is really really nice. You steal you steal their best creature, get a swing in with it, and then it dies anyway. So really really nice that it's an act of treason combined with a kill spell. Uh, really like slave to Bolas. Uh, right then, this was really uh, interesting. Well, they had one each of these uh, split cards. So two of these are from the Invasion Block, and the others from um, Ravnica, original Ravnica. So we had Spite and Malice. Um, so uh, the whole way split cards, if you're not seen them before, you, um, you choose one half when you play it and you get all that and you ignore the other side completely. And there's a whole bunch of like weird other rules, like how they interact when they're in your library and stuff. Don't have to worry about any of that in this deck. Um, so spite and malice. So spite counters a non-creature spell and malice destroys a non-black creature and it can't be regenerated. Both of these are kind of expensive, but it's kind of like charms where they're overcosted. What you're paying for is the, um, is the versatility, I suppose. Um, pain and suffering. Uh, so pain is just a straight up discard. That's it, like just one black just to make someone discard a card is, is I think pretty good. And then suffering is, um, an expensive stone rain destroys a tiger land. But as both decks are tricolor, this can take out like a dual land and can really hamper, um, you know, playing cards and stuff. So that could be okay. And then uh, rise and fall here. So rise is a uh, blue and a black. Uh, return a creature card from a graveyard and a creature from the battlefield back to owner's hands. This is really nice combining raise dead and unsummon. Again, it's very, very classically blue black. <laughs> um, and then fall is black and red. Uh, type player reveals two cards at random from their hand, then discards all the non-land cards revealed this way. Um, so again, another sort of discard effect. Um, both, all of these, I think, are uh, perfectly fine. It's nice that they give the deck like a bit of versatility in what you can do. Uh, then we've got a single counter squall. Uh, so blue and black, you counter a non-creature spell, and its control is to life. This is all right. Yeah, it's again just a just a fine counter spell, kind of like a smaller undermine, I suppose. Uh, re recoil, which is a card I really like, and I really wish it got reprinted with like with new art. Um, it probably won't though because it now bounces, it bounces lands, which um they typically don't like doing these days, I suppose. Um, but one a blue and a black return a pound to his hand, and then the play, and then they discard a card. So if they've got no cards in hand, this is like basically a very roundabout kill spell. Um, but yeah, I really wish this uh, kind of got reprinted with with different art because it's it's got goofy old art, and uh, I wish it had new cool art. Or even like a functional reprint where it was like return non-land permanent and then they discard. That might already exist, I don't know. Um, and then a Vapor Snag. Um, so un it's basically unsummoned, but it also makes them lose one life, which is all right. Uh, then we got, oh my god, we still got so many cards to go. Uh, we've got Agonizing Demise, so three in a black um, with kicker for one red. Uh, destroys a non-black creature if it can't be regenerated. Uh, and if it was kicked, it does damage equal to that creature's power to creature to the to the controller um so potentially very expensive here at six but you know if you kill off a big creature and does a whole bunch of extra burn damage then yep that's obviously fine deep analysis with the um 
uh, new Nicole Balassart here. Um, this is really nice. So three and a blue. Uh, type player draws two cards and you can flash it back for one and a blue and you also pay three life. Um, so potentially draw four cards here off, off a single card is, is quite nice. And then uh, in Elder Mastery, a three, a uh, blue, a black, and a red. Aura goes on a creature, gives it plus three, plus three, and flying, and whenever it deals damage to a player, they discard two cards, so sort of turn them into a, into a spectre. And also, just plus three, plus three, and flying is also pretty good as well. Uh, so yeah. And then we've got a single Icy Manipulator, four mana artifact. You pay one and to uh, tap an artifact, a creature, or land, which is, yeah, again, perfectly fine. Stops, like, Ajani's big creatures attacking. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely fine. We've got two Obelisk of Grixis here as a mana rock, and it gives you blue, black, or red. And then... We've got a whole bunch of non-basic lands. We've got two Crumbling Necropolis, which is the um, Grixis Trial Land. Single Rupture Spire. Uh, ends the battlefield tapped. If it ends the battlefield, you sacrifice it unless you pay one. And then taps give you one mana of any colour. So, again, this is pretty okay. Uh, two Terramorphic Expanses for searching up your basics. And then Nine Swamps, Seven Islands, and Five Mountains. Oof, what a... Felt like such a marathon to get through all that. So, pretty okay deck, I think. Nicole Balas is obviously focusing... Uh, more there is like a like a bit of a discard theme in there, and I'd I'd say overall that is probably the the theme is um making you know forcing forcing the opponent to discard because you got all the effects that care about it, but also just general sort of like Grixis kind of control with just a whole bunch of kill spells and bounce and counter and stuff. Um, it's it's kind of tough to say out of the two I like because um I think a Johnny's deck overall I think is made better. In terms of like what cards are in there and stuff, um, Nicole Balassa's deck I think has a few cards in there which like I'm not super keen on. Also, the other thing is like it doesn't really feel very thematic for Nicole for Nicole Balassa because like a lot of it is kind of old invasion reprints or like Demir or Demir cards from Ravnica. It doesn't feel very on theme for him, I suppose. Um, even though I I love Nicole Balassa as a character, I mean I, I I wish the deck had been more sort of aligned to his character, I suppose. Um, so out of the two, I think uh. It's it's close, but I'm gonna say I think I like the Ajani deck like a little bit more. Um, just I think you know that whole the whole life gain strategy it has I think is is done like a little bit better than whatever theme uh Nikki B's deck has. But I'd love to know obviously what you think about this. Um, what you think about Nicole Balassa's deck, or you think how the two decks match up against one another against one another, like um sick combat down below. You've got anything to say about that? I'd really like to hear about it, uh, but I'll be back next time. Going to look at another dual deck, um, slightly special one next time. So I hope you join me for that. But until then, thanks for watching, and listening, and have a great day.